Yeah, just have a, a seat there. We're supposed to learn, and learning is so devastating. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, are you talking about love there? I'm talking about lots of stuff, you know. Or heartbreak. Uh, yeah, I mean, hu humans are bound to our need for convention, and I think learning in general is, um, is a, it's a pretty tall order for us. But I think with love um, in general, it's a constant, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, that's a battle because emotion and things are blinding. Mm -hmm. And um, I think our hopes and wishes for what relationships and love ought to be. We, we don't learn it in school. We don't, I, I often figure that love isn't a feeling that just sort of overcomes you. It's a decision, you know, that you're just going to do that. Yeah. You, have, you, have you been in a learning mode? <laughs> Uh, slash devastating <laughs> uh, period. <laughs> I'm devastated by learning all the time. Um, have I been in a learning mode? Yeah, yeah. And I'm in a lucky place right now. I'm in a good thing. I'm in a. I'm feeling good and I'm feeling strong and I'm feeling inspired and and. Um, and how, how come? Oh, you know, love and life have all seemed to um, be blooming in uh, rose-like ways at the moment. So mm. that's yeah. It, it is spring and we are young. It is spring, and I'm basically still young. Hmm. Nice. Do you do you do your moods? Uh, do, do, does your um, overall emotional state rest upon your relationships, whether you're in love or, or and it's going well or not? <laughs> I don't think so. No. Maybe it does. You know what? It See, does. I, these I was, these I was songs seem to be a lot about relationships and love. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true, and um, I think because I want to, I want those relationships. I think. I think that life ought to be celebrated and greatness ought to be celebrated and so great love, great aspects of life, whether it's eating food, family, friends, these things, you know, I think we're, you know, all of this talk too politically and whatnot, there's a sense to me that our culture is quite happy being dumbed down and being lied to and being um, patronized, but I think that there are elements of life that really ought to be celebrated and if they're not, the mediocrity just sort of washes in and all of a sudden you've got a basement full of water. Tell me about this decision to, uh, I mean, it's clear that you've, you're, you've been through a prolific period of, uh, f of creativity, uh, I'd say in the last two years, because last year you put out two records. This decision to put out two records, this, uh, you, you're, you know, some would call it an interesting business, music industry business uh, model to, to announce that there's two records coming out. One of them's uh, Meat is coming out January 19th, and then you said you're going to meet out the songs from Milk over the months uh, following. Why do, th do things that way? I think that, um, well, I am freshly off a major label, and I'm all by myself again on my funny little... Isadora Records label. And I think that we're all, in a way, kind of wondering what it is that this new business model, um, you know, the music business is not unlike the car industry anymore, where uh, the, the widget that used to carry the songs is, not, is, no, is no longer necessary. So how, uh, how do any of us who are in this business um, try to figure out the next move? And I think that it's not so much a, a savvy try as it is a, hey, well, we're not bound by the rules that we were bound by only five years ago, so why don't we just enjoy ourselves and think about doing things slightly unconventionally? And it, it, if not only for just keeping ourselves interested in the business, a dying business, kind of a sad business, but, you know, I think music has never been better, so it's hard to say. So, you, I mean, your philosophy seems to be to put it all out there. I don't have a choice, I guess. You know, like, uh, and I often make the second record by accident. I was on a writing tour in Stockholm, which I, I sort of do on my off days as I write pop music for other people. On your see. off days, you go to Stockholm? Sure. <laughs> 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 and, I, and I met um, a brilliant guy there named Martin, who I wrote a song that was very much not appropriate for a Kylie Minogue pitch or a Katy Perry pitch, but was appropriate for a Hoxley Workman song. And then I was in New York, too, with a friend, Doc, and this other fellow, Ali Shahid, from uh, Tribe Called Quest. And we were doing some writing, and it turned out, all of a sudden, we had a second record. And so I, I wish I could say I was, s you know, sitting back and planning my, uh, my business maneuvers. It's not that. And, and why not amalgamate them, Huxley? Why not do, uh, the Blue Rodeo put out the double album this year. Uh, Joel Plaskett put out a triple album. Uh, you could have just put all these songs on, on two records named one of these things, right? Well, the one is decidedly electropop. It was um, produced by this fellow in Sweden, and he went to town on it. And it sounds like something that I could never have created on my own. That's Milk. That's Milk, yeah. 
and meet. Although was, the song you just played wasn't electro pop. It is on the record. Okay. Yes, but um, minus the the hairdo and the capes, it's just a song. <laughs> right. And meet. Yeah, that was done. Well, I'd come off uh, a trip to Australia. Lonely and I had been going to Australia around Christmas to tour there for the last few years, and um, I'd come home to a pretty different uh, life reality. And instead of drinking myself into an oblivion listening to the CBC, I hired my man Stu Crooks to come up to my house in Burks Falls, and I have a garage there full of instruments and equipment. And he kept me on the straight and narrow. We made the record meet. Uh, it's again these things. Um, the the motives are sometimes not obvious. That, so listening to the CBC, this was the only part I heard of what you just said. Right. It, you had me at listening to the CBC and drinking yourself into oblivion. Sure. Hopefully they're not synonymous. They sometimes Always. are. I mean, I, f I can find myself up north in, by the fire, and I can just lose myself in Paul Kennedy or you or anybody else, and... And um, I get all giddy about how fabulous. Uh, okay, it, it, was, it was drinking yourself in a good way. Oh, absolutely. Oblivion. All right, the, the, the positive obli oblivion. Where that where oblivion meets a, a grand buffet. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Where oblivion meets buffet. Uh, it's it's so good to see you as ever. I'm glad to be here. Uh, thanks for previewing these songs uh, on on this show, and best of luck with this. I know you're going to be touring a big tour coming up, and uh, we look forward to seeing you as ever back on the show anytime. Thank you. Now, this Toronto-based musician, Hawksley Workman, uh, he was joined in live performance by Todd Lumley. His new album is called Meat. It's available in record stores everywhere, and Hawksley Workman has been with me here in Studio Q. <laughs> 